everybody. Um, this video is going to be a book review. I never know how to do introductions. I hate them. They are awkward and I never know what to do. So I always just started with it with, hey everybody, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, anyways, like I said, this video is going to be a book review and the book that I'm going to be, um, excuse me, I'm good. The book that I'm going to be reviewing today is called Anatomy of a Scandal by Sarah Vaughn. I was given this book by, I was sent this book by Atria Books. Um, this is the little thingy that they sent me. I finished this book last week and um, I have not been able to actually do a review. So this is the first chance that I'm getting to actually do it. Today's the last day of January so I'm going to edit and upload this as quick as I can before the day ends um, because this book actually came out on January 23rd. So we'll leave links to... Um, where you can get it down below. I will leave links to where you can find the author because she is a new fave so I need to check out more of her stuff. Because, yeah, um, I usually put a bunch of post-it notes in my book but in this this one I didn't. I actually wrote all my notes on my computer so we will be going through all of the chapters where I wrote notes and hopefully this doesn't last more than 20 minutes because my book reviews tend to take forever. But yeah, so this book is called Anatomy of a Scandal. Like I said, Sir Vaughn, um, uh, this is an art, so this is not the actual cover. I hate, I hate these kinds of books, like these covers. Do you see all my prints? It's gross. I hate, they like, I don't like it. So this book, this book, five out of five stars. I really love this book. I completely recommend it. And I'm excited to start talking about it because honestly, this book was very good. So there is a synopsis um, on this. I don't know if you can see that if you want to like pause and read it. But this book is basically about a man. His name is James. And he um, is a very high man in government, in the UK government. I suck at telling like stories like this because I jump all over the place. But this book is told in several points of view. But the main, the first person point of view person is a woman named Kate and so she is a prosecuting lawyer she's a prosecutor um she is the main character the story really revolves around her and her story and her struggle basically what it boils down to is um this guy James he is accused of raping his secretary that he was in a relationship with he's he was a married man with children um best friends with the prime minister and so Kate is actually um Try, she is going to prosecute him and so this is a story about sexual assault and seeing if this the victim victims get justice and if this um, rapist is put to put in jail so if that sounds interesting it's a little bit more complicated than that um, it's a very good book I will get into it right now but before I continue I'm, it's gonna be spoilers galore moving forward um, because I like to talk about details in the book um, so if you if that is a, if this is a book that sounds interesting interesting to you I very very much recommend it the writing is amazing the storyline is amazing the characters are very good and you know, complex and well thought out. Um, and it's just a very good book and I definitely recommend it. But if you would like to continue watching and let's have a discussion about this book, continue watching. I'm about to get into it. Okay, so chapter one, I already really like this book from chapter one. I can usually tell if I'm going to really like a book based on the writing from like the first two pages, one page at least. If I like the writing already, I already know I'm going to like the book. It's very straightforward. It's very, it flows nicely. It's really well written. It really lets you see the scene. It's great. I love books like that. We start off with Kate and on page five, there's a, there's a Justice here. There's a quote because my one of my favorite shows on TV is How to Get Away with Murder. Viola Davis is my favorite actress of all time. I love her. And so there was a quote here that made me kind of reminded me of her. It says, um, advocacy is about being more persuasive than your opponent. You can win even if the evidence is stacked against you, provided that you argue better. So in court, which sucks, um, you can have all the evidence on your side. You can have you can be right and you can be correct, but if your argument is not as strong as your opponent's, then you can lose. So in this first chapter, we basically learn about what who Kate is um, the surface of who Kate is um, what this book is going to be about um, whether or not we learn we learn we we have the question we start the question in our heads of is this man going to get prosecuted and put in jail and so gotta agree to the end of the book to figure that out all right so then chapter two um, is told through Sophie's point of view now Sophie she is the wife of James and then another note that I wrote here just like continuing on with the writing um I wrote I I might just read off my notes because um yeah anyways 
But yeah, I wrote, I really like the writing. Uh, it makes the story easy to read and understand. The writing isn't pretentious. What needs to be said is said with the perfect amount of detail that allows me to see the actual scene, hear the sounds, almost feel the atmosphere in the room, which is wonderful. Show me, do not tell me. That is like a golden rule in writing. And the story also takes place in the UK, so there are, there are a lot of like British terms and stuff that I, not a whole bunch that you couldn't understand it, but there were a few terms and phrases that I like didn't really get being an, an American, um, but it's nothing that's distracting. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of me reading off my notes and then just commenting, so be prepared for that. But yeah, number, chapter four is James's chapter. Uh, um, but on page 35 he talks about his infidelity um, towards his wife and he barely gives himself any credit for what he did um, as the person who cheated on his wife and he actually starts to blame his wife for um, and the woman that he slept with because his wife didn't want to sleep with him as much as they did before they had kids and he still you know needed it every day and bleh. so he was being very selfish and he just in this chapter he seems to think that this whole thing is not as big of a deal as it is I actually have a quote here it says marriage he decided was when his fidelity would start so he was with Sophie and then he only began to be only with her after they got married that's disgusting um anyways and then he goes on about how he's been faithful for 12 years like wow congratulations for not cheating on your wife congrat like do you want an award people amaze me these men amaze me oh my god anyways and then on in chapter seven skipping ahead um there is just a quote that i really liked and it's on page 66 uh, at the end of the first paragraph and this is kate's um thing and so she said um, we all mellow with age. We make compromises, bend our opinions, become less strident, except that I don't, not when it comes to rape. And um, that was one thing that I really liked about Kate's character is that she was very adamant about her beliefs. And, you know, even though people get older and experience things, that doesn't mean that your, like, values and what you, like your opinions towards certain things they shouldn't change especially with rape like she said so that was one thing that made me really like Kate's character I really liked it from the beginning but that was just another thing that kind of solidified that um chapter 9 and 10 so we learn about this woman named Holly and so she is a Sophie's um friend from friend because like Sophie uses her um her friend from school from college when and so in chapters 9 and 10, we're learning more about Holly, um, and we learn that Sophie basically used her. She was out at one point with James because they were together when they were in school, um, and he's like, who's that? And she's like, oh, nobody. So rude. Chapter 11, this is Sophie's chapter, so she's talking about how she, all she wanted in life was a successful husband, um, children, how she had focused so much on finding a husband during college rather than focusing kind of like on herself or her studies or whatever. And at this point in the story with Sophie, I found her really pathetic. I found that really dumb, honestly. You know, if you, if all you want in life is to be married and have kids, I mean, it's your life, live your life. But like, I can't imagine how that's, all anybody ever wants is like women are human beings wives are people mothers are people they are human beings with their own thoughts and needs and you know aspirations in life their only role is not to be a wife or a mother I just anyway so at this point in the story she wants to be by her husband's side she which I can understand from her position she is her husband is a high um He's a big person in the government, so she, you know, has to at least appear loyal to him. She has to appear like, you know, she is supporting him and believes him. Because not only did he cheat on her with this woman that he was having an affair with, but she is accusing him of raping her. And then there was another thing that she said that, like, kind of caught me off guard. She's like, she has never spent more than two months without being with a man. And I I don't understand how people do that. I, I don't understand, like... You learn to be alone with yourself you need to learn to become your own person and then on page 111 she calls Olivia the woman that her husband was having an affair with she calls her a bitch and I do not understand the men and also the women who blame the other women in the affair for their husband's mistake number one your husband, the man that you made vows with, the man that you started a family with, has gone behind your back and betrayed your trust and, ha and had an affair, but you're going to blame the woman. I just... 
And in chapter 15, I wrote on page 141, it's a Holly chapter and it's just a big old description of books in the library. So I thought that was, I thought that was nice just because I'm, I like books. Okay, so in chapter 19, um, this is when Holly is um, raped by James at the university. And so I would say trigger warning for this chapter because it doesn't go into extreme detail. It's not overly... Um, it's not overly descriptive, but it gives you enough, it tells you enough so that you know what happens. So I would just say that th that is what happens in chapter 19. So if you would like to skip over that chapter, like you won't miss anything else. But yeah, so chapter 20 was kind of like a turning point in this book for me. Um, it was a really important chapter. And so it turns out that Holly, um, Holly's character is actually Kate. And so I'm over here thinking, okay, Holly, you know, this happened to Holly. Maybe she's going to come into the court room later on in the story. And she, maybe she's going to, you know, say something against James to be like, oh, he did this to me too. No, it turns out that Holly is actually Kate, Kate, the woman who was prosecuting her own rapist. So what happened is she dropped out of school. She changed her name. She went to law school. Um, and so this story just became a lot more personal because Kate is pros is trying to prosecute her own rapist this man who doesn't even know uh like who she is as she's standing in front of him she got a little bit um, i think she got her nose done she looks a lot different as an adult now she doesn't even look like she did when she was in college and so that i had to stop reading i closed the book it was just a really big blow i was like whoa in chapter 21 so there's a woman named Allison and so she's Kate's um, best friend they've been friends since they were in college she's, she's the only other person that knows what happened to Kate um, she doesn't know who did it to Kate but she knows what happened and so this chapter is about her and you know she basically in this chapter she figures out that James is the man who did this to Kate and so she becomes really concerned she goes to Kate and she's like are you okay? Are you gonna be okay if, you know, this doesn't go like, you know, we were hoping it will? Um, and so this was just a chapter of her kind of, you know, figuring this out. And so chapter 23, this is a chapter of, with, um, from Sophie's point of view. And so she is with her mother outside of London while her husband is being, you know, put in court. And so there, uh, the majority of, of Sophie's, um, what's it called her chapters are a lot of like kind of self monologue and it's her thinking and it's her trying to piece everything together and figure things out and so the farther we get into the book the more she is kind of you know believing that her husband is capable of this she's starting to you know go back and think about everything that's happened in their lives and how he you know might have the capacity and might be capable of doing something as horrible as this and so that's just kind of weighing down on her really bad no I understand it's her husband she wants to believe him I mean that's that's the whole thing with this book you want to believe your husband she wants to destroy him so you I imagine is you know Sophie so I can understand I guess that she doesn't want to believe it this is a man that she married this is a man that's the father of her children but you know deep down she's like oh my god like he he did it so in chapter 24, we actually learned the phrase that he whispered to Holly, aka Kate, when he did what he did to her. And he also said the same thing to Olivia when he did what he did to her. Um, and so that's just evil, evil, disgusting man. And so what's sad is that we only know of him doing this to two girls. We only know of him doing this to Kate and to Olivia. We don't know if there's been more. When he ran into a when he ran into Kate or Holly um in college, it was like just it was like on the street. So we don't know if he's done this to other girls. We don't know if there's other women out there suffering because of what he's done to them and he doesn't even give it a second thought. Another thing that I really liked about the writing was how um all of these things were coming to light, how we were how the reader was kind of learning all these things. Um, I thought it was really smart the way that the author kind of pieced it all together for us to learn it and so in this chapter also Allison confronts Kate and is like I know that it was him are you gonna be okay and she agrees to understand and stay silent because if it gets out that you know Kate is this close to this case then she can get kicked off the case and she can lose you know her opportunity to, pro to prosecute him herself so she keeps it quiet um they both hold on to the secret which sucks and so chapter 27 um, this is Kate's chapter and so we finally get the verdict for whether or not James is going to go to jail. Not guilty. So at this point I was 
so disappointed, but also not surprised just because this happens all the time. This happens in our justice system all the time. And so also in this chapter, um, or in the following chapter, uh, 28, this is Sophie's chapter. And so, and so this whole chapter is Sophie and James having a conversation. And so Sophie basically makes James admit that he did it. And he's like, well, what are you going to do about it? And she's like, whoa. And so there's a part in this chapter where James, they're fighting and I've read, um, and he compares him lying in court to her lying about saying someone looked nice in a dress when they didn't. How do you compare? I just, I, I just don't. Oh my God. Okay. So it's chapter 29. This is also Sophie's chapter. They are at her mother-in-law's house. Um, she has a conversation with her mother-in-law and her mother-in-law tells her, you know, if you were to leave him, we would understand, but we really hope you don't. It would be better for the children. Honestly, it'd be better for the image of the entire family. And so that pissed me off and um so the mom she's like oh I wonder if it was some kind of me my parenting that you know caused this to happen and honestly you can't I don't think you can create a rapist you can make a society in an environment so that a rapist is able to get away with it and for them to be able to live a normal life without any consequences which is disgusting and horrible and shameful of you know our society that any society that allows that so what I think it is is that James like so many rich white dudes out there so many men period just feel like they are entitled to something who feel that they are entitled to being correct all the time and that they are entitled to women and that they are entitled to their status and their power and that is not correct that's called privilege but yeah when it comes down to it you can't blame other people you can't blame his parents um for the actions of a rapist because not that continues to take away the blame from the rapist when so when a woman gets raped it's hey what were you wearing what were you thinking what were you did were you drinking it's not questions towards the rapist which is ridiculous and so the last sentence on in this chapter on page 323 um is Sophie being like well why do I need to carry the burden of this why do I need to hold on to the knowledge that he did this and he you know doesn't think that it was wrong and then we have chapter 30 this is Kate's chapter um and then she has a description of a sunset in the second paragraph which I just liked she talks about the sun and the and like views a lot um and I couldn't piece together what that was kind of supposed to represent. Um, maybe like her mood looking to the f looking forward and trying to not have the past drag her down a new day. Maybe that's what it was kind of supposed to represent because she talked about like the sunset, sunrise a couple times in this book. So um, chapter 31, this is Sophie's chapter. And so there is a college reunion. It's a couple months past um, the James basically getting off. And so um, there is a college reunion of, you know, Sophie and Kate and um Allison's year Kate does not go but Sophie does and so does Allison so at the end of the night Allison is drunk and she kind of she tells Kate she she tells Sophie she's like hey you remember Holly yeah that's Kate and your husband raped her and so she tells that to um Sophie and Sophie is just it's just another blow to her chapter 33 is actually a really important chapter also because James, we find out that James and uh, the Prime Minister, which is his best friend since college, they were actually involved with drugs and in the death of a fellow peer in their year. And so they were involved with, with a death basically on campus. Um, and they got away with that also. They got away with it also. And so then there's two chapters left in this story. Um, chapter 34, this is Sophie's chapter. Um, and at this point, she basically decides that she's going to finally divorce him, which is you know bravo for you girl I like this part in the book she basically talks about gaining strength from the fact that Olivia was able to speak up that Kate was able to um you know pros like stand up in front of him and try and prosecute him that Allison was brave enough to go and tell her what had happened she none of these women were doing anything to try and like kind of be, be anything they were just trying to you know Allison was trying to defend her friend Kate was trying to get justice for herself Olivia was trying was told the truth and tried to get justice for herself also um and Sophie kind of she she acknowledges that hey these women are really brave and they're really strong I can be like that also and I really like that the author included this in um the story because um, it just goes to show that like all of the brave women out there who speak up and all the more women and men who are speaking up against sexual assault especially 
like even in the past couple years, um, it's important. Your voice can inspire another person, can give strength to another person to reveal the truth and to get justice for what happened to them. So chapter 35, um, we learn about what James and the Prime Minister did um, when they were in college. And so in chapter 35, this is the following year after this whole thing happened with the um, the rape case. And um, it turns out somebody leaked something and it's on the front page. Hey, James, so whatever, whatever it said that like the Prime Minister is involved with, you know, the death of an old college peer. And so um, Kate is like determined. She's a prosecutor, so she can prosecute anything. Um, so she's like, you know what? If he's not going to go down for what he did to me and Olivia and hopefully not other girls, he's going to go down for this. And so that kind of leaves Kate and the reader with like a little bit of hope. I would love this to be, um, something that I could see because this is really good content for something that could be on screen. But yeah, I was kind of thinking of like, I don't know, Jessica Chastain, maybe to be Kate's character. I just really like that actress. Um, and I think she would do a really good job. Um, I don't know. I just would love, I would love to see justice, if not in, you know, the real world, then in this fictional one. Um, and if the author was, was true, I don't, you know, this book ended in a really good way, but I'm always just, you know, sucker for more. So if a sequel were to come out, I would definitely pick it up because, um, I would love to see. I love just political drama. I love court dramas. I love reading about it. I love stuff like this. But yeah, and I also, so Sarah Vaughn is the author, right? So she um, is actually a former journalist who lives in England with her family and she has experience as a news reporter and polit political correspondent together with her time as a student at the University of Oxford. And so um, I really like that about the author that she has that experience and she was able to gather from that to write this book. And it's just, uh, it was a good book. But yeah, a little bit, of, a few last thoughts I already kind of dived into. I would love a sequel. I would love to see Kate at win and even for Sophie to maybe even work with her, maybe. I would like to see some kind of, to, to see these two women who are on such opposite sides of being so hurt by this man um, and have them be able to work together to take him down. That would be true girl power right there but yeah i need kate to finally beat him i need her to have that knowledge that he is put away and that have him be an example for other men like that that you know think that they can just do things like that and get away with it because you know what time is up but yeah the last thing that i wrote in my notes here was um he wasn't put away with the rape charge but there is a possibility that he will go away for this next charge actions have consequences a phrase that men like him don't seem to think are applicable to him so yeah i like i said at the beginning i really enjoyed this book this video is probably super long so if you watched it thank you <laughs> i think that is all that i have for this video let me wrap it up because like i said it's very long i tend to ramble and talk a lot during my book reviews <laughs> but yeah um thank you again to at books for um sending me that book to read so like i said that is all that i have for this book um if you read it please leave uh, any comments down below i would love to have a conversation with you if you are sarah and you're watching this i really loved your book <laughs> but yeah thank you all so much for watching and um i will see you in my next video bye